I'm your host, Gary Seegers, and this is BetUS TV. Now, you've no doubt seen the celebrities visiting Churchill Downs on early May Saturday for many years now. You know about the tradition, the display of fancy hats, the billionaire owners, and the jockeys. The Kentucky Derby is known as the greatest two minutes in sports, and it has been run, as of this video, 147 times now. Casual sports fans know about the Triple Crown, Kentucky Derby, the Preakness Stakes, and the Belmont Stakes. How many people really know how to bet the pony? How do you bet on horse races? What are the strategies to win? Today's show, we welcome in BetUS sports betting expert, Flash Watson, to help us learn how to win betting the Kentucky Derby. Now, Flash, we got a lot of questions, so I certainly appreciate you joining us for today. Oh, listen, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Obviously, horse racing is my number one love outside of the sports that I play professionally. Um, lived in, in and around the uh, equine arena for many, many years. So, uh, yeah, I'm always happy to talk about it, especially when we're coming up to the 148th running of the Kentucky Derby. Most certainly. Now, you were speaking to a novice when it comes to actually betting on the horses. I enjoy the race. Uh, but let's get down into the dirt here. Let's talk about what's actually going on. The Kentucky Derby is held at the Churchill Downs racetrack. Can you describe the track? For yeah, I mean, it's um, it's basically like a mile round. And uh, you've got maybe like two and just over two furlongs or uh, what would they call that? They would say that it's a quarter of a mile in because obviously I use European terms. Um, out the gate, straight into basically you've got enough time to get yourself organized, get yourself, uh, get your horse rolling, settled um, into the first turn, which is a left hander. And then at the other end of the race, you've got a, a slingshot left handed turn back home with about a two furlong run in. So again, it favors both sides of a front runner. And the horse that's going to come off the back, especially if the uh, if the ground is is maybe a little bit sloppy. Well, so tell me this: what type of horse actually lends well to that? Well, if we get normal, I mean, the, the best thing about obviously American racing is that we normally get a standard underfoot condition, and I I would say that we need a strong stayer. But someone that's got a bit of speed early to to take up a position, get a lead, and doesn't burn up too much. And then um, we call it tactical speed. And not only do we need a horse like that, but we need a jockey on top that's got them fractions in his head. And he can then assess whether they're going too far. So I would like maybe... Um, a draw is important as well, but I would like a, a horse to, to break, have a nice bit of early uh, toe, get himself maybe fourth or fifth don't go go to the front even though last year's winner medina spirit went to the front good fractions early and managed to hold on as well at plus 1200 i like to be front ranks so maybe in the first uh, six or seven because remember there's 20 runners so with 20 runners if you're out the back there could be a plenty plenty traffic which is something you don't want because this is this is a, a run-in of two furlongs where you can get momentum but if you get stopped because of horses that have gone off too fast and are stopping in front of you, or there's traffic because the horses are not as quick as you, it's a lot tougher to come off the back. I remember uh, some horses have tried to come off the back and they just get there too late. Now, you brought up Medina Spirit. Are there are there new contenders each year to look out for, or does one horse really dominate this track? No, I mean, uh, it's for three-year-olds only. And this is like the uh, the equivalent to the English Derby uh, for three-year-old Colts. Um, we've got the Oaks, obviously, on the Friday as well. So it's a new bunch every year. A lot of these horses we would have seen in the top grade races throughout last year, coming up towards like the Breeders' Cup. But no, it's a new batch. And this year, if the uh, odds would have us believe, it's wide open. There's no clear-cut favourite, whereas I do believe that after seeing all the tape and seeing all the prep races, that there is a couple that are uh, better than most. Well, of course, of course. Now, you, you brought up only three-year-olds can run. Uh, why is that? Why, why do they only allow the horses to run uh, the one race? Well, no, this is basically you have like loads of prep races that sort of come into the triple crown races. Right. Now, what it's almost like it's a pinnacle. It's a goal for the breeder. It's something like you bring them through a two year old and the goal is just for them select horses for that age category. And then they uh, they have it as the triple crown races. As you said, obviously, we have the Kentucky then we have the Preakness then we have the Belmont and they are different types of track for different types of horse. But the Kentucky Derby is the first one it is one of the most famous and probably the oldest in uh, on this side of the pond. 
um, and it's just the pinnacle of their of their careers, really. Not many. Let's put it this way: not many train on after a real good three-year-old uh, year, because obviously we got the obviously the triple crown races, but then we've got the Breeders' Cup at the end of the year as well. And that certainly certainly does make sense. Let's go ahead and talk betting. For us novices that are betting the ponies, what are we looking at to help us win? What are some strategies viewers could use to maybe bet on the Kentucky Derby? Well, there's different, obviously there's different niches and there's different categories. If you, I like for myself, who's been around horses, I like to judge by the eye. And one thing I was, my one of my best friends actually trained in America and he used to say to me, Flash in America, always go by the clock. The clock never lies. And maybe 85 to 90% of the time, the ground is consistent. So the clock gives you a real good standard, a real good barometer. Now, so I always go with what I see, how it travels. So basically what it's like in a race, how it finishes its races, and also what time it does. Now we've got a horse running in this Kentucky Derby that broke the track record uh, in the Louis Louisiana Derby, uh, which was uh, Epicenter. And people were trying to crab it. You cannot crab it because it's on the clock. It's not like it's beat what the horse is. It's beaten. It's actually beaten the clock. So I'm I'm a firm believer in uh, in clock runnings. Now let's let's talk about a few other uh, strategies here. At the draw position. You mentioned that earlier. Uh, what exactly? Like how important is the draw? Massive in the Kentucky Derby because you've got 20 right across the track. And remember, you've got two furlongs to get yourself organized and get yourself into a sweeping left hand bend. So I would say the 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 are not good. And, I, and they call it the coffin box. If you're down on the rail in maybe one or two. Um, it's one of those where if you're at one or two and you've got three, four, five, six at break, you, you're going to get squeezed back and you're going to have like 15 horses behind you. Now, from 15 to 20, we call that you're out in the car park because you've got to sweep into that left hander and you've either got to use up too much petrol early to get there or you're going to swing wide and maybe give up five, six, seven lengths. And five, six, seven lengths over this trip is a hell of a lot. You, you, not many horses can actually come from that. So you've got to make a decision if you're out wide, whether you're going to take a pull and come in behind the horses as they're battling to get to uh, get to that first bend. It's nice to be on the speed. So if you're at maybe three and four and five are quick horses, then you're not going to have any problems because you can just follow them through. So I don't want to be in one, two. I don't want to be in 15 to 20. Now, you did mention earlier when we first started talking, about uh, the role that the jockey would play in this. You want to have a good jockey for this. Uh, what exactly is that role? What are you looking for in a jockey in this race specifically? Uh, I want tactical awareness. I want someone who's not going to panic. If they're going too quick, he knows that they're going too quick. So he doesn't want to be up on, on the speed because if he's up on the speed and they come into that final, uh, that final turn with two furlongs to go, which is still like 420 yards, He's going to burn out and not have anything at the end. You're going to need to have a horse that's going to finish this race. So you you, you take a jump out the gate. You obviously want to, you've got a furlong, furlong and a half to get your horse rolling, settled, and be aware of horses that are coming from your wide outside if you're drawn in the middle. Also, then you've got to know that if you can get out down on the rail, that's a great place because you're always going to have the shortest route. The problem then you've got is if you've got maybe three horses in front with targets on their back, but you've got three on the outside, you might get boxed. So some of these uh, jockeys, they'll make a decision of saying, I'm going to make a mid race move. So basically they'll roll off the um, they'll roll off the uh, rail. And, the, and so then if the horses stop in front, they're not going to get as boxed. And also what they do then is they push them horses on the outside a little bit further. So they've got to uh, they've got to go a lot further. So I would say that I want to I want someone who doesn't panic, somebody who gets into a rhythm early and knows how to adjust. You've got to be able to adjust mid race. And, and obviously you then if you panic. The horse feels that you panic and, and your chances are probably lost. So I want someone who's been there, seen it, done it. And because if they've been there, seen it, done it, they know what type of horse they've got under them in this type of race. So I think the jockey is so, so important and uh, almost as important as the trainer. 
Now, you did bring up the importance of the draw just a little bit ago. I want to circle back to that. What are the advantages of making a bet pre-draw? Uh, and, and if you can, maybe explain that and maybe maybe tell me, do most of the wagers come in pre or post-draw and, and why? Professionals will probably go with uh, post draw. I, I've, I basically, if I see there's a horse, and I can actually uh, speak from facts here. Epicenter runs in the, uh, this week's Kentucky Derby, and I saw it at five fifty plus five fifty. My eyes tell me it's a plus three fifty, maximum plus four hundred horse, uh, but he has early. He has early speed, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just taking a pun on i'm on the right side i've got the right value and the only thing that's going to kill me is if i really get to maybe 17 18 19 and 20 i'll give myself a little bit on the 15 because he'll use a bit because he's got that natural toe and he's got tactical speed but anything lower than that apart from one and two because i don't want to get trapped on the rail is I'm happy. I know that my horse can go early i know that my horse has gears and when you have gears it means that you can go past horses and not get into a fight because in a blink of an eye, you've gone by. And that's what I saw in the epicenter. So really, I was not really that bothered about the draw unless I was totally unlucky, which I have been in, in a few uh, few Kentucky derbies. I think I had 18 one year. That's gracious. Uh, let's talk about the actual betters. We see all the numbers that come out on these horses. For somebody that uh, maybe has not done a ton of research, you see the numbers and you don't know exactly what you're betting on. How can a better beat the odds on a race like this? Well, I mean, you've got obviously tiers. You've got the people like your Auntie Joan and your Grandma Cecil who goes to the Kentucky Derby. And they'll pick names. They'll pick jockeys. They'll pick colors. They'll see, oh, that my favorite is running in pink. I'm going to I'm going to go with the pink one. Um, and, and really, the numbers mean nothing to them because... They, they could be plus 5,000 or they could be plus 500. They actually look at the name. Now, there's many ways you've got win, place and show, which are more your uh, experienced betters. But then you get your fun betters who will pick maybe the exacter, the first and second. I'm not really one of them because I think it's hard enough to pick the winner in the first place unless you find a race where there's two outstanding horses. Um, and then you can say, well, I can't really pick the winner, but I think either of these two can win. And then they can come first or second. Then you have your more fun bet of picking three horses and they can come first, second or third in any order. And then you have a super trifecta of the four, four horses now. Uh, I, as I go, go back to saying, I find it hard with the first one, but we're talking about maybe five bucks, maybe a maybe dollar, maybe two dollars. Um, on these uh, combinations you pick four horses and then just let them run and you never know if all four come in and it's like one two three four bit in any order then you get paid i think that's more the fun side of people who go for a day out you admittedly said that you do you're not really a horse man you're the one that's going to likely do that also more the on the exotic side which they come under that category then you would say like the pick four or pick six where you put your five dollars down you try and pick the winner of four or six races and you can do many combos you could have two or three in a race you can have one if you think there's an outstanding favorite and it gives you that value and entertainment all day so i mean there's many ways to have fun the trifectas are tough but if you hit them you get paid well and you don't have to put a whole lot down on it in order to get paid so that does oh. make sense I, I do want to ask you about this. Uh, we went through, you know, the different types of bets uh, that for those that uh, that may not have paid attention, a bet to win a place or a bet to place and a bet to show are your three most common types of wagers. Uh, you did jump into the exotic wagers, uh, the exact as the trifecta the, the superfectas, et cetera. Uh, inside of those three, there are different types of bets. One of those being a box wager. Now, what exactly is uh, a box wager? Box wager is when you, you pick maybe up to, like, say, three horses, four horses, and they can come in any any um, order, you know. So it's almost like you – so if I had three, that would come up as six bets because there's any combination. So if I did it for $2, it would come to $12. So, again, it's just picking three horses or four horses in a race, first, second, third, or fourth, and you can make uh, – they can come in any order. So it's just the number rather than cheering on a horse. So it's a bit like a round robin parlay bet when it comes to in the same race. 
etc. In the, exactly in the same race. So yeah. that, that's always good if you've got a couple of front runners, you've got a couple that are closing, you and the closers come and they go past you. So with a furlong and a half to go, you've got two at the front, but then you've got two coming from off the pace. So for me, it's uh, it's something I don't do, but I could go to the races and five or six of the people I'm with, they will definitely do that. That makes sense. Let's go ahead and recap. The race is run at Churchill Downs. We've talked about the type of course that lends well to this track, along with some different strategies that Flash uses to bet the Derby, and of course, the different types of wagers that you can place. Flash, you are the best. Thank you for helping us learn how to bet on horse racing, specifically the Kentucky Derby. Can you tell the viewers where all they can find your content online? Yeah, obviously on the BetUS uh, Soccer Channel or on the BetUS Golf tennis and horse racing channel bet us tv uh, yeah listen it's just one of those but make sure you have some fun and uh, listen there's more than just the kentucky derby it'll be the kentucky derby the preakness and the belmont this year and then we'll end the end of the year at the breeders cup thanks gary you're doing a great job mate. that flash you are the best uh, the man of many coats handles all of it here at bet us with that said we'll go ahead and let you get out of here make sure and stay tuned to bet us tv for more videos on how to bet und